There are only five bhikkhus listed in this sutra, and only three monk bodhisattvas listed. For the lay bodhisattvas, there are sixteen listed. Isn't it too obvious what it means? This method, this scripture, is the supreme magic weapon to help fellow lay practitioners to become a Buddha in a lifetime. I often persuade fellow practitioners, I say, who do we rely on today? Who do we learn from? We have to learn from Amitabha Buddha. Why? Our original teacher Shakyamuni Buddha advised us in this way. The world-honored one praised Amitabha Buddha as the supreme light of light, the king of the Buddhas, we learn from the king among the Buddhas. Amitabha is the king of Buddhas. The Sutra of Infinite Life is the king of scriptures. What else can we say? It is enough for us to follow this sutra today. If you say that there are too few sutras, it is probably not enough. Every word and every sentence in this sutra is the perfect dharma wheel. Not only are all the dharmas spoken by the world-honored one in 49 years contained in the words and sentences of this sutra, and each and every word is complete, even if all the Buddhas and Tathagatas of the Ten Directions and Three Times have spoken the endless Dharma treasury, they cannot come out of the infinite life. This principle, this truth, we must thoroughly understand, and then we can be determined, and we can achieve success if we go deep into one subject. This is like when we dig a well, we dig a well, take water and dig a well, you keep digging in this place, the deeper the well is drilled. The more abundant the water source, you can reach the four major seawaters, depending on your depth. The Dharma is harmonious. You can't dig shallow, the taste of a shallow well will not be like the taste of a deep well. Digging deep down, each well can be dug so deep, the taste will be completely different. Buddha and Buddha are the same path, just afraid that you are not drilled deep enough. It is imperative that we understand a subject of penetration and practice for a long time in order for us to have true achievements. This place clearly shows that this sutra is for fellow lay practitioners. Fellow lay practitioners, in a very complicated environment, can consummately become a Buddha in their entire life, let alone isn't it easier to become a monk? This is about universal salvation, and there is no sentient being who cannot be saved. This classic book is really subtle to the extreme, extraordinary to the extreme, and perfect to the extreme. Among the lay bodhisattvas, only bodhisattva worthy protector is the native, the remaining sixteen, in the commentary by the great patriarch told us are all bodhisattvas from other directions. This clearly states that the Buddhas of the Ten Directions are all preaching the Pure Land. If any Buddha speaks about the Pure Land and this scripture, all bodhisattvas from all over the world in the Ten Directions will come to participate in this Dharma assembly, adorn the ashram, and influence the masses. This means a very deep and broad meaning, then you have to ask, what exactly is this, Infinite Life Sutra, talking about? The titles of these sixteen bodhisattvas are the outline of the whole sutra. And this sutra is all about these things. If you understand all the names of the sixteen bodhisattvas, you can probably understand the main idea of this sutra. We are here to introduce one by one. The purpose of the introduction, how can we learn from them? We must first study with Bodhisattva-worthy protector. Last time, I talked for half an hour about Bodhisattva-worthy protector. But I didn't explain the full meaning. I told you, today we still have to start over from him. Protector, is the Dharma protector, the Dharma protector must be, worthy. In the Dharma of our world, the Chinese Confucianists call the saint, the sage, the gentleman, Saint Sage Gentleman. In fact, these are the three academic degrees of Confucianism, 
like our current university, with a doctorate, a master's degree, and a bachelor's degree. A sage has a doctorate, a sage has a master's degree, and a gentleman has a bachelor's degree. It can be seen from this that those who can protect the Dharma and protect the general public must have a standard. This is a true sage, and only a sage and a gentleman can do it. In Buddhism, sages are bodhisattvas of the three sages. As you all know, Infinite Life Sutra is a Mahayana, not just a Mahayana, the Mahayana of the Mahayanas. The one vehicle is right in the one vehicle, this word, virtuous, has a high standard. The three virtuous bodhisattvas of the perfect teaching are the bodhisattva of ten dwellings, ten behavioral practice, and ten transferences in the Avatamsaka Sutra. At the beginning of the perfect stage of dwelling, one level of ignorance has been broken, and one part of the Dharma body has been proved. Only a master of the Dharma body has the ability to protect and uphold the great Dharma. Which great dharma? To protect the great dharma of infinite life. It is also the protection of the pure land dharma. This dharma door is not an ordinary dharma door. This dharma door is a dharma door that enables all sentient beings, all beings in the nine dharma realms, to become Buddhas equally. All the dharma doors cannot be compared with this dharma door. It is truly incomparable, the highest and most perfect Dharma door. Who can support? Dhammakaya. Worthy protector is a bodhisattva at the stage near perfect enlightenment, so there is nothing to say. If you use the identity of the near perfect enlightenment bodhisattva, then this saint is the Buddha, and the Buddha is the saint. The Buddha is a great saint, and everyone below the Buddha is a great sage. So this meaning is extraordinary, so as not to misunderstand this Dharma and mislead the direction, it would be a pity. Not only is that not protecting the Dharma, but it is obstructing the Dharma, hindering the Dharma, and that is wrong. Worthy protector is especially for ourselves. If we learn Buddhism, how should we protect our ourselves? Fellow practitioners should especially remember this point. Now it is different from the ancient times. In the era of autocratic monarchy in ancient times, all the common people obeyed the orders of the king, and you did what he told you to do. If you violated it, you would break the law and violate the king's law. People did not dare to deviate, and everyone knew how to abide by the rules and the law. At that time, teaching was easy to teach. For example, in the Qing dynasty, not only in the Qing dynasty, but also in the early years of the Republic of China. At my age, I can still remember it. In the early years of the Republic of China, in the 10 or 20 years of the Republic of China, I was very young at that time can still remember when I was six or seven years old, seven or eight years old. At that time, there was an article in the law called, Parental Punishment. What is this law? Parental authority is your parents, and your parents have the power to punish you. My son is unfilial. I ask the government to kill my son. The government will execute it immediately without trial. Your parents, which parents do not love their children, parents do not want you, can you still be a human being in this society? You are not qualified to be a human being. So the state immediately executes the order, which is called parental punishment. It seems that after 20 years of the Republic of China, this article will be abolished, and there will be no more. Without it, people will not be filial to their parents, so no longer afraid. There used to be this rule, dare not offend your parents, if your parents sue, your life will be gone, why is he not afraid? Without this rule now, this son is not filial and acts recklessly. 
In the past, Teacher Lee talked about this matter, and when he talked about this matter during teaching, he was very impressed. He asked me, and I said I still had the impression that in the early years of the Republic of China, there was indeed such a law. This is possible in an era of autocracy, but not in an era of democracy. Democracy, look at many countries, there is no death penalty for serious crimes, so people are not afraid of committing crimes and committing crimes. I am in Australia this time, and Australian law does not have the death penalty. Although it emphasizes mercy, mercy is more harmful, and it is easier to go dirty, which has brought a lot of suffering to the public. If you want to protect the Dharma now, your parents can't teach you because you don't listen. And teachers can't help you because you don't listen either, just pretending to obey. So, today, a good teacher wants to find an obedient student, where should he go to find it? Searching the whole world could not find a single person.